Welcome to Title Talk, a podcast for real estate investors where we cover tips, tricks, and trends in the industry. This podcast is all about providing valuable insights to help you maximize your investment opportunities. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started, Title Talk is the place to stay in the know and get inspired. So grab your headphones, tune in, and let's talk title. Hello. Hi. Hello, Dina. How are you? Excellent. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Did you guys know that today is our one year anniversary episode of Title Talk? Woo! Woo! Bubbles. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. Super blessed to have uh, this incredible show. So many people, so many people have reached out to me and said, thanks to Title Talk, I use Fidelity National Title as my title company. They've been super helpful. They've helped me with my deal. They've helped me with my wholesale deal. They've helped me with my creative finance deal. And so um, cheers to Fidelity. Cheers to you, Dina. Cheers to you. Cheers this to Bobby child for the help of putting this together. Incredible. Yes. Our amazing producer behind the scenes. Sometimes and, he's in front of the camera. And what's also uh, really interesting is Bobby, Bobby brought up that uh, that in, we can actually see from the title, uh, that title, that little title sequence, that uh, my face is smaller and I've actually gotten a little tinier since that yes, shot too. Have. Bobby said mm, 15 pounds smaller since that. I don't know. What do you think, Dina? I think that he might be accurate. Yeah, about 15. Maybe, okay. Maybe, I'm with it. Maybe. I'm with maybe it. Maybe we need to do a new intro. Oh no! I like I like, I, I like all the fat intros. I mean, I even want the fat intro to stay on wholesale hotline forever too. Fat intro and and back in a time when I used to dye my beard black too, so it was it's weird because I had this like black head, black beard, fat face, and it's just. <sighs> Anyways, it's well. We hope you guys have had just as much fun with this as we have. Um, I can't wait to see what the next year brings. It's gonna be amazing. So many things are happening right now in the world of real estate. There's a couple of things that I think are the elephant in the room, uh, which I we have to talk about because it's going to affect every industry. I think that it's going to give title a massive headache. <laughs> and that's uh, the first thing is the NAR ruling, right? Yep. The, the, um, the NAR the ruling, press. hot off the press. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, they uh, have made a decision now that as of July 1st, the MLS will no longer have... Um, the uh, buyer's side commission, so uh, the the 3% that goes to the buyer's agent, just baked into the, enti to the entire commission. So It's no longer going to be advertised in the MLS. No longer advertised in the MLS. So, of course, a listing agent, when they work with their seller, they're going to negotiate a 3% listing before that even makes it to the MLS, right? So that 3% is already going to be whatever. If it's 3%, 2%, whatever a listing agent and a seller agree upon will be how much the uh, listing agent will make. I think the whole thing is, is that the general public always felt that 6% was non-negotiable, that it was standard. And I believe that real estate agents uh, likely never explained to sellers that it was negotiable. They mm -hmm. just said, no, it's 6%. It's just what it is, right? And so it's 6% and it's always paid by the seller. And I feel like the reason that NAR was sued and why all these real estate brokerages were sued is because it's never been standard at 6%. It's always been negotiable. And the fact that that was never disclosed to the general public, I think, is the inciting incident that created the problem. Right. Yeah, so basically buyers and sellers felt like they were not properly represented, which is what led to the lawsuit, right? Um, so because of that, NAR has said, okay, we're going to make these changes um, and come up with some new regulations. Now, my personal opinion is anytime that there's a shift, it's a gift, right? Anytime there is regulation, um, it's an opportunity, right? It's an opportunity for the cream to rise to the top, for the best to get even better, um, and I think it'll weed out some folks that maybe aren't doing anybody a service by having a license and doing one deal every five years. I agree. I agree. So let's let's kind of talk about in um, uh, let, let's kind of talk about. Yes, I guys, I'm I work hard. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm I am uh, I 
today I've been in a challenge. Today I was doing comping, and now I'm on a podcast. I'm all it's over non-stop. the place. Nonstop. I'm all over the place. So don't don't you stress. I am absolutely like. And Superman. this is he's real. This is yeah. not like I don't have AI. A, I don't have a, an AI double. <laughs> But It'd be nice sometimes if we had an AI double. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Yes, thank you. You're amazing as well, Facebook user. I wish I knew your name. Tell me your name. Um, but okay, so, so here's what I'm, I'm figuring out. Right, that buyers agents are going to have to have an awkward conversation that they may not want to have. So why does it have to be awkward? Well, I think. You know, society, Western society has made talking about money awkward. We're told it's not okay to ask people how much they make. It's not okay to talk about, you know, um, finances at the dinner table. Like how that's just how society has propagated this discomfort around money. And I think that it's made money a dirty conversation, which has made it awkward for people to talk about it, which is why friends ask friends for discounts. You know what I mean? It's this whole like money has become this thing that we shouldn't we shouldn't have it. We shouldn't. For for instance, for me, I feel like if you're my friend and I'm in business and you want to come do business with me, asking me for a discount is disrespectful. Truly. You should come in and be glad to pay full price. You should be supporting me. You should be helping me get there, helping me make my business profitable and, and doing things rather than coming in and trying to make me lose money on you or trying to make me not make money on you. Like that's not what you know, business is all about, but this, this, this is absolutely, um, the, the, the thing, right? The buyer's agents are going to start having to have this conversation with their buyers and say, look, you want to work with me. You want me to show you property. You want me to drive you around town. It's not going to be for free. I have to be paid to do that. And unfortunately the way that, uh, our commission structures are now, I have to pre-negotiate this with you. So, Typically, real estate agents get paid 3%. That's negotiable. What would you like to do? And that conversation is going to need to have happened prior to a buyer's agent taking anybody out for a showing. Now, or opening a door. Or opening a door. But I think that's good because how many times has a buyer's agent not had that conversation, helped somebody, opened up a door, helped people with a bunch of stuff, only for that, that buyer to then go and work with somebody else and, and, and not get paid and not get paid. And, and then the buyers, the buyer's agent then feels like I should have had them sign a buyer broker agreement. And then, you know, this conversation with, with buyers and buyer's agents on the buyer broker agreement in general is kind of uncomfortable because sometimes buyers don't want to get locked into working with one agent. They feel like, well, hold on. Yeah, I can work with you. I called you on this one, but what if I want to work with somebody else? And so there's this in uncomfortable, um, uh, uh, complexity. Yeah. So I, it's funny, tap dancing around. So I think what it's doing is actually creating um, the opportunity not to tap dance around, right? So you're going to interview for the job. You're going to bring your resume. Correct. And you're going to leave with a commitment where you guys agree that this is what you're going to get compensated when you successfully find them a home and they close, right? I think that's fair. It's just like going into a listing consultation where the goal is to leave with a contract in hand and a commitment from the seller. It's just going to be the same thing on the buyer side, which hasn't always been the case. I would venture to say that like maybe 5% of agents use a buyer's broker out of the gate right now. And now it's going to have to go to 100% because that's now a requirement. Right, right. Now for wholesalers, so how does this affect wholesalers, right? Because I'm an I'm a wholesaler who works with multiple real estate agents. I'm kind of an agent ho. And <laughs> um and and so with that said, I will sign a buyer broker agreement with the buyer's agent, but it has to be property specific. I I won't sign an exclusive buyer broker agreement for 6 months because I can't. You're going to buy too many properties. And I work with too many agents. And when a buyer when a buyer's agent says, well, that's not loyal, I say, you can't satisfy me. I'm sorry. It's not about loyalty. It's about you just don't have enough. There's not enough of you to, to satisfy the volume my company does. Well, if you think about it, though, like you could come to an agreement where you're saying, if they bring me a property where nobody else has brought me that property and I agree to close, then I will agree to pay them a commission. Like Correct. that's an agreement between two parties that totally fits into the new ruling. Yep. And so it is, 
Uh, property specific. So for wholesalers, if you're working with a real estate agent, you're going to want to have a property specific buyer broker agreement. Now, where does that 3% get baked in? Before, when you're a wholesaler, you're going to give your price to your buyer's agent or your, your agent. And you're going to say, I want to pay 110 or I want to pay 100,000. Let's just use easy numbers here. I want to pay 100,000 for this property. And you would expect in the past that both agents, listing agent and buyer's agent, would be paid from that 100K, right? So they'd be paid out of that 100K from the seller. Now, when you are working with your realtors, you're going to have to bake in the 3% into your offer price. So instead of offering 100, you would offer 97. Yeah, so that 3% that you're going to be paying to the buyer Agent will now be in your in, in in a part of your deal. So you will you'll be thinking about it. Okay, I'm offering the seller 97. So this is going to make things a little bit weirder, right? Because now a seller's offer is going to decrease by three percent. Maybe right. So with the new ruling, it doesn't mean the seller can't pay the buyer's agent commission. It just says that it may not have to come from there, right? Right. So it could come seller, from the buyer. It could come from could the still seller. Pay it. Yeah. But like, is this going to turn into a? I, I don't know the the appropriate term for this. They they call it. It's like a, it's you know a Mexican standoff. <laughs> I don't know. Is there like a non? Is there like is that racist? No. Okay. So does this turn into a Mexican standoff? Right, uh, Bobby. If you could. Can you uh, show the people on the screen what a Mexican standoff actually uh -oh. is? So people I'm can, afraid of what he's going to um, find when he Googles. This. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great little <laughs> visual. I want you guys to all understand what I mean when I say it. I'm not, it's not, you know. Um, all right. Yeah. So, uh, make it, yeah. Make a image big. There we go. Mexican standoff. That's what it is. Right. So it's, everybody's got a gun pointed at everybody else. Right. Oh. So I got a gun pointed at Bobby. Bobby's got a gun pointed at you. You got a gun pointed at me. Mexican standoff. All Who's right. going to fire first. So that's where <laughs> I feel like these conversations are going to go. Right. Because how does that the seller is going to say, I don't want to pay it. And the buyer is going to say, I don't want to pay it. And we're not even in. We're not even having a conversation about the property yet. We're not even talking about price. We're talking about who's going to pay the 3% the buyer's agent commission. So it's going to turn into a Mexican standoff. I don't disagree with you. I think I it will. But I would say, you know, it's going to be up to the listing agent to explain that they're going to be limiting themselves, you know, to the potential buyers out there if the seller's not willing to pay a commission. Right. So would you rather have a higher offer that's going to net you more money in your pocket if that means you're going to pay the buyer's agent? Quite possible. Right. Because what do sellers care about? They care about what are they walking their away? Net. What's their net? What does that look like? And and it's always been that their that their net was less six percent to pay their agent and the buyer's agent. Right. But but lest we forget the the memory spans of the human. <laughs> right. Who is going to ever remember? This is how it always was. And this is where I think uh, real estate agents are going to have their, their issue because they're all going to be sitting on their member berries. This is a South Park reference, by the way, for any of you who don't watch South Park. I was like, Park, is a member should. berry like a blackberry? Member berries. <laughs> I have no idea what mem that is. <laughs> mem member? Mem member? Mem these are member berries, okay? So those are member berries. If you can show us the member berries, Bobby. Yep. Are, you, are we seeing the screen? Okay. So those are member berries, okay? Member berries are uh, those time, you know those people that are like, remember, remember when, remember? And it's like, remember? And it's just like everybody's in that, in that, like, in that nostalgia. And then nostalgia is the people eating their member berries. And I feel like real estate agents are going to be sitting there in their nostalgia. Remember when sellers used to pay us our 3%? Remember, remember, yeah, remember, 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 yeah, remember. Yeah, so that's. <laughs> I feel like you are gonna sir mix a lot, a little bit of a riff on this whole NAR thing. I have one a of good your ass time fancy, with it. Fancy uh, producing. I'll, I'll be. I'll be honest with you. I have had so much fun. Um, why did? Why do I have fun? Not because I'm. I don't love real estate agents. I love you, real estate agents. I love you all so much. 
he wants to work with all of you too. A thousand percent. Um, but I also think now is the time if you're a real estate agent for you to become an agent investor. I think that having the hat that I'm a real estate agent full stop needs to end. You have to start learning how to supplement your income by being an investor. You got to learn how Monique Walker makes over a million dollars a year with me by participating in deals with me, right? Why are you limiting yourself to 3%? You know how much more than 3% Monique Walker makes on every deal that her and I do? She typically makes over 6%, sometimes 7%, sometimes 10%. Because split right? I spit, split yeah. my profit with yeah. her. Yes. Yeah. So agents need to change their way from being a, a service provider to a participant in the action. And, and that's where I think this has to go. My olive branch to real estate agents across the nation is it's time to learn wholesale. It's time to learn creative finance. It's time to put new tools in your toolbox so that this 3% Mexican standoff doesn't become the demise of your business. Well, I don't think this is going to be the demise of anyone's business if they choose to look at this as the opportunity, right? Like any time we have new regulation or major changes happen, and by the way, this is a major change that's happening in our industry, we have the opportunity to level up. I agree. I totally agree. And and um, you you either level up or you disappear from the industry from the industry <laughs> uh and and you know and look bottom line right bottom line it's it's never bad when things get more difficult because the people who are hard workers the people who are consummate professionals the ones who see this industry not as a side hustle, but as a profession, as their vocation, as their purpose, as how they serve others, they will rise and they will thrive. And I absolutely believe that every real estate agent has an incredible opportunity right now to participate in the shift, to participate in the pivot in, in, in mentality, mindset, and really embrace the investor world the way that titled it. Absolutely. Like, think about when the wholesale regulation came into play. You didn't freak out and say, oh, I'm going to have to close up shop. You no. You figured out how to actually have an ironclad disclosure that covered you under any transaction. Absolutely. And some people still haven't figured that out. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I want to speak to, uh, there's a great point here. Um Glory, Gloryful Skip says, so basically the same agent can still represent both sides. Let's let's talk about Dual that. Dual agency is a little different. Well, <laughs> well, hear, hear this, right? So my, I've always taught not to use a buyer's agent. If you're going to find, if you're looking for properties on the MLS, go directly to the listing agent, right? And and I've gotten pushback from people like, ah, but how is the person going to be a fiduciary to both sides? Right? Okay, <laughs> fine. You sounded like a South Park character. I, right I, there. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> A uh, little Eric Cartman came out there, but yeah, how how is uh, how how can they be a fiduciary to both sides? Well, here's here's what I'm saying: if a real estate, if a listing agent doesn't have to have this awkward conversation or this Mexican standoff on the three percent that's going to pay the buyer's agent, and if I just pick up my phone and I just call the listing agent and say, "Listen, I want to write an offer on this property. I'm coming in unrepresented. I don't need that three percent. Let's not even have to have the uncomfortable conversation." You take your 3% that your seller is giving you. I don't need it. Here's my offer. It's going to be X net to the seller. How he pays you is your business. Now this becomes an incredible, easy conversation for the listing agent to have with their seller. And the seller is going to say, I love this guy. I love the fact that we're not having to have this uncomfortable conversation. On, because how many of these uncomfortable conversations are going to happen before all the agents start getting really frustrated? Well, I think you got to take the uncomfortable out of the room, right? And it's it's about transparency. It is. And and let's talk about transparency for a second. Because this this concept of fiduciary duty, right? Let's let's talk about what a fiduciary duty is. Bobby, if you would. 
Let's Google the term <laughs> fiduciary. I love the member berries, by the way. Those were so good. So my personal definition of that is loyalty, right? Somebody looking out for you um, in your best interest. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a that's a great definition. Let's see what the 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 um, the dictionary is. It's a uh, in it's in regard to a relationship between a trustee and a beneficiary. Uh, that's the bad one. Okay, let's find one that's written in English. <laughs> Uh, okay, a fiduciary is somebody who manages money or property for someone else. Blah blah blah. Oh, that's talking that's about the, a wealth no, manager. Not fiduciary. a wealth manager. I, I want to real estate. What is fiduciary duty? Yeah. Thank you. Ah, okay. Fiduciary duties are legal obligations that require an individual or entity to act in the best interest of another party. In real estate, agents have a fiduciary duty to their client which means that they must act in the best interest of their client and not their own interests. I like Irish, Jamil. Was that Irish? kind of sounded like a little Irish. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, um, but let's talk about that for a second because if you're a real estate agent, would you think that understanding the value of your client's property would be a fiduciary obligation? I'd love to hear what the audience has to say about this. Well, guys, chime in. Yeah. If you are if you are hiring a real estate agent as your fiduciary, would you expect that them knowing what your property was worth in differing conditions would be a fiduciary duty? I'd like to see you guys chime in. Of course, the F word. Uh, yes, chime in. Of course. Yes, of course it is. Sure. Yes, of course. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to say yes, other than there's a caveat to that, right? What it's worth is what somebody is willing to pay. Okay. And that piece is semi unpredictable. Semi unpredictable. On the market. So there should be a margin. Yeah, but there's also comparables that we can use oh, as yeah. markers the way the, that an appraiser would, right? So an appraiser who gives an estimate of how much a property is, is, uh, worth do that based off of um, using sold property in comparable condition to determine value. That's how they decide. Yes, a buyer decides how much a property is truly worth because how much a buyer will pay is how much the property is worth. And they might pay more than the appraised value or yes. they might not be comfortable paying correct. the appraised value. Correct. Correct. So now, should it not be mandatory for a real estate agent to know how to value property if they're going to be entrusted with the fiduciary duty of understanding that value for their client? I would say yes. I would say yes. Okay. Do you guys know the percentage of real estate agents that are taught how to comp in licensing school out of 100? In school? In licensing school. I didn't learn that. Out of 100% of real <laughs> estate agents, how many are taught how to comp in licensing school? From zero to a hundred percent. I don't know about across the country, but I know here in Arizona, we never talked about that. Zero percent. Not one. Not one. Wow. It's sickening. It's sickening. And that's why we've got such low standards in this business and why so many people get let down why there are 5,700 plus expired listings a day across the country. 5,700 expired listings a day. 5,700 real estate agents fired a day in the United States. Out of 1.5 million. Yes. That's a lot. Think about that, right? Why is there no lawsuit against that? The gross incompetence. Of, of putting somebody and trusting that person in, in selling my property and not giving me an honest understanding of its value, wasting six months of my time on the MLS, racking up days on market, devaluing my property, making people think there's something wrong with it because I didn't know how to value this property co co correctly. Because I, instead of using my real estate knowledge and knowing what this thing should, would sell for on the market, I instead was bullied by my seller or I just listened to my seller or I lied to my seller and I just told them whatever they wanted to hear so that I could get a listing agreement signed. That's the truth. Let's talk about that. Title talk just turned into 
real estate reality. It's the facts. <laughs> it's the fact. That's what happens. That's what happens. Real estate agents lie to their sellers or they just tell them what they want to hear so that they get the listing agreement signed. I don't think they all do that. I mean, not all of them. There are some very ethical people out there who won't take a listing that's overpriced because they don't want to waste their or their seller's time. That is a fiduciary. That's a fiduciary. Yep. But somebody who is just going to say what they need to be, what they need to say in order to get a listing agreement signed is not a fiduciary. That is a, that is just somebody just doing what they can to try to get some business. Now, um, I know I'm got hurt some like feelings right now. Against the wall and hoping it'll stick. Yeah. Right. right? But it's expensive. It's expensive and, and it, it devalues. It's like, you know, I, it's to me, days on market on a property is akin to a salvage title on a car. A salvage title on a car. Think about that, right? Somebody give, rear ends your Tesla, okay? You get a banged mm -hmm. up and you got to go get uh, your bumper. I got to get it fixed. And you get a salvage title, mm -hmm. okay? What does that do to the value of your car? Changes it completely. Right? Because it's, it's been in an accident. Because it's been in an accident. Okay. So why do people, why does it, even though you've had it completely fixed, you've had it completely fixed. And to the by by the standards of the of the um what is it the the dealer I I got it fixed at the dealership they use their own parts they use their own service people and it's perfectly fine now and it's cosmetically beautiful absolutely there's nothing wrong with it absolutely but the car is totally devalued absolutely can they not hear me. Oh, okay. My, my bad, guys. Sorry about that. Thanks so, for the feedback, by the way. We always yeah, appreciate no, it. No, I appreciate it. I want to be heard. So, so um, title is still dirty. Okay, so, so, so now think about this, right? You've got the dirty title, which what does that tell people? What does that tell people? They're, they're going to pay less for the car. Why? Because there's something wrong with it. Yep. Okay, so what do you think days on, long days on market tell a seller or tell a buyer? Something's wrong with it. Yes. Yes. It's the same thing. Days on market on a house is akin to a salvage title on a car. And when a listing agent isn't honest with their seller, they are salvaging the title of that house. They are damaging the saleability of that property because that day on market, that lengthy days on market will never be erased. The internet doesn't forget, my friends. It doesn't. You can ask Bobby because there's videos of him. From when he was a lot younger. <laughs> when he was a when he was a, a ghost cab driver. <laughs> oh boy. He got he got a giggle out of that one. So so <gasps> this is my point, right? When when we're talking about this whole concept of, you know, the liability and who's at fault and the six percent, and why are we worried about that six percent when we're still not training real estate agents to do their jobs correctly? Well, I got a question. In what other industry can you get paid the same thing if it's your first day on the job versus somebody who's sold tens of thousands of homes 20 years later? I, I totally agree. I mean, think about that. Yep. I totally agree. What other maybe industry if you're a starter okay? in, maybe if you're a starter agent, you work on a flat fee and you and you build yourself and you build your book of clients and you build your your uh, a prowess as a real estate agent. To the point where you're like, I am the badass agent in all of Phoenix. I am. I know. I have every relationship. I can find you off market properties, on market properties. I can negotiate. I got every friend. I know every vendor. I know every person that you would need to know. I'm three percent or get out of my office. I've got some clients that charge more than three percent, and they get it all day. And every and day. what is their what? Because they're why? worth it. I mean, because they show value in those appointments. And they have the testimonials and the client, you know, um, backing them from their history that shows that and proves it. So about that, the 3%. The bring your resume to the job thing, I think, is going to be crucial on buyer's consultations moving forward. It will. Forward. In fact, real estate buys and sales will become a meritocracy. <laughs> Just recently, what? Google gonna, that word <laughs> meritocracy. So I'm going to announce something on Title Talk today that I have not yet talked about. Oh, I love it when he surprises me. Yep, <laughs> a meritocracy. Oh, what? Oh, 
True parody. Okay. Um, there is a new platform that yours truly has is now sitting on the board of. Uh, this platform, founded by one of the founders of LinkedIn, hmm. is going to turn real estate sales into a meritocracy. How it will work is when a homeowner wants to list their property, they will put their property on true parity, and now agents will compete for the listing. Yes, they will compete based on what services they'll provide, what commission they will charge, what type of pictures they will take, what kind of staging they will provide, what type of advertising they will do, how many open houses they will sit, all of it. All of it will become negotiable. And all of it will that will now come into what will make up the 3% commission for a real estate agent, even if it is 3%, because it's all going to be up for co competition. Yes, guys, true parity is going to change the way real estate is bought and sold. And I'm telling you, it is going to absolutely level the playing field. So if I'm an agent and I want to compete for your... Uh listing how do i do that well you have to sign up with true parity okay. so that you can now compete on the listings that are going to be placed on true parity okay so all of you agents that are out there that are watching this let's do this get let's, in it yeah be one of the first folks be, be one, of, one the of the first you um, heard it here first you heard it here first on title talk i have yet i had i had not it i had not announced it i <laughs> wanted to do it in a special place and what better place than the first year anniversary of title talk Woo! Then talk about the true parody, uh, incredible uh, invention by one of the founders of LinkedIn. Can you and you know one if 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 one of the people from LinkedIn is involved, this is going to the moon. It is the best professional website to be exchanging conversations with other professionals. Right? Yes, yes, and thankfully, I'm gonna. I sit on the board. I have equity in the company. So. Why is this and when did this start and why am I just hearing about this? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, there's there's documents and, and secrecies that uh, I'm sworn to yes, until yes, things yes. become executed and deals are struck. Yes. Right. And also I was waiting. I was patiently waiting for somebody to tell me how much money I was going to make. I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> but no, really, I wanted to see what was happening with NAR. I wanted to see what's going to happen with this okay. ruling. I wanted to see where this was all going to go. And uh, I. As I watched it, I realized, okay, this is the move. I, I'm, I'm betting on this. I'm betting on this to be the future of how real estate agents operate. And, um, and yeah, so true parity, guys. This is, this is the future for real estate agents. You heard it here first. If you want to become a real estate agent that competes for listings, that's where you go. Trueparity.com. Go opportunity alert, opportunity alert, guys. I mean, if you are a licensed agent anywhere in the country and you are watching this and you want more business, this is business in your backyard that you're not already getting today and an opportunity as a new lead stream. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have they successfully closed any transactions on True Parity yet? Or is this so new that all the folks watching this are going to learn and have this opportunity right away? Uh, transactions have already closed. It is. It was in beta, though, um, but it is new. Okay. Very, 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 very new. Um, I'm like one of the first involved. Uh, it was, uh, you know, in development when I first got involved and started talking to the people in, involved in the company, the the founders of it. And truly, I was amazed. That's amazing. Yeah, I was amazed. And they wanted to align themselves with investors and, and influencers in the space that got it, that understood it, and didn't have this visceral hatred for real estate agents. In fact, I love real estate agents. I have nothing. They make you millions of they dollars. They make me millions of dollars. I love realtors. I love them so much. I even love the realtors who call themselves realtors. I love all of you guys. <laughs> I do. I love all of you, realtors and realtors alike. And so my, my goal is for all of you to level up, level up the playing field, level up the way that you're doing business and understand that things are changing and you're going to need to compete for business. It's just how it is. And I agree with um, Lori's comment, you know, competition breeds excellence. You're, you're spot on there. 
um, I, I think, again, this just creates more opportunity for people to level up. 100%. 100%. Now, Dina, I want to end this NAR conversation, but I think there's a couple of things we want I, I, I would want to just button up before we go on yeah. to wholesale regulations. Ooh. This is just going to be one of the most fun episodes of Title Talk. Ever. We're covering a lot of things today. I know. Right? <laughs> um, how will escrow officers, um, how will, how will title have an influence or be um, roped into the conversation of commission? So a couple of things, um, you know, right now we are, we are in the fight with you trying to figure out what this is all going to look like and how this is all going to play out. So the first thing we're doing right now is, is masterminding, right? Mm -hmm. Is having the conversation about what do people do now? How do we put the right people in the room to have the conversation so that the right folks are going to level up so that when July comes and everything else is in place, you know, all the people in our world have a plan, right? Um, so that's what we're doing today. The reality of what we do is we get commission instructions to spell everything out for us on the title side. So we know who to pay and how to pay them. Got it. So it's super simple. Going to be super simple super for you. Super simple. The, the fight's going to happen before it gets to your office. Oh, yes. And we just want to be at the forefront of the education and the support to help people level up as the industry is changing. Right? I love it. I love it. And last thing. Yeah. How will this affect lending? So I think there's a lot going on in the lending industry. I was in a mastermind this morning with some lenders from across the country that, that are part of core coaching. Um, and I think what we're going to see is different guidelines and regulations take place where um, buyer's agent concessions can be financed into a loan. Ooh, so they're going to figure if out If I have a prediction, that's it. Okay, because that was going to be the that would have been a, a game changer for the real estate market. I think well, that if I we think about VA VA loans, VA FHA, they're, they're, they're like, max. When you have a three and a half percent, somebody coming in with like zero to three percent down, right? Right? How are they going to come up with an additional three percent to pay their buyer's agent? This fly is absolutely <laughs> it's relentless. It's like <laughs> it's like doing this what, the whole time. We're what is time. wrong with you? <laughs> It, this is it, is this this fly. You know what I think this fly is a bug from NAR. <laughs> are we getting bugged? I might be. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. But we're live. So if you guys are watching us be like this, yes. you know uh, that's what's happening. There's Twitch. a fruit fly right now Twitch. that's been installed into my living room by NAR um, to to it's to, recording to, us. To, it's recording so. us. It's like a weird drone. But okay, so here's the deal with the regulation. There's three ways that um, the buyer's agency can get paid. Right. The the Seller can pay it out of their proceeds. The buyer can pay it, or it could be thrown into the loan. So in order for that to be thrown into the loan, regulations need to change. And I think based on what things look so like So regulations today, will have to change in order for it to get folded into the loan? On the lending guidelines, yes. Is that a Dodd-Frank thing? No, it'd be more like a FHA, VA, you know. A be, government thing. Yeah. Oh, and we know how long that takes, guys. So. Remember, remember, <laughs> berries, remember when we didn't have to wait for figure out who was going to pay our 3%? Remember, remember, remember? Well, as yeah, things remember. stand today, I think the most difficult would be, you know, the folks that are doing 100% financing, right? And those are typically your FHA or your VA folks. Right. And right. why should they have to suffer based on this other thing that is done with good intention to help support consumers? I agree. I agree. All right. How's that for uh, three good questions and three pretty I mean, decent answers? Phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Guys, um, if you guys have enjoyed this conversation about NAR, uh, do me a favor and write gnarly in the chat. Put gnarly in the chat. <laughs> with a K or with a... Uh, no, with a G. <laughs> gnarly is usually starts with a G. G -N or just N-A-R. Or just put NAR. Oh, wow. Like a pirate. NAR. Pirate, pirate patch. NAR. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to... Um, and if you guys have feedback on that, on yes. what you're doing to change your business today um, based on the ruling, we'd love to hear it in the chat too and share that. So feel free to drop it in there. Feel free. All right. On to wholesale <laughs> laws and regulations. My goodness. We'll call this the most depressed. This is our anniversary show and it's no, the most but depressing I think it's opportunity episode. Alert. It's not depressing. It's opportunity alert. Yeah. It is an opportunity, of course. Regulations think, are always okay, so opportunities. Before we totally change subjects, okay. one thing that's different about your wholesale business is the folks at Keegley are licensed. Correct. So why is that? 
Okay. And and how does this affect that decision? Okay. So here's what happened. Uh oh. When when <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> when we started Keegley, I had in my mind that I wanted to build a wholesale company that I could one day sell. Okay, because I started with the end in mind. Okay. And you're always visionary, forward thinking. Because that's just what I am, right? I looked at this and I'm like, how do I build something that I can one day exit? Because I'm old. And I'm you like, you are not old. But I mean, you're I, so young. I mean, at the time, you know, I'm like, I'm 45 now. I started it seven years ago, right? So I was 30, what is that, 38? 38, 38. 38 years old. And at 38, I felt old. I was also 245 pounds. So I was heavy and it was, I was old, I was whole, old, heavy. It was hard for me to get around. I couldn't get out of bed easy. You know, well, I couldn't, that's all changed. I, now couldn't, you're young again. I couldn't touch my toes. Um, <laughs> there was a lot going on there, right? Before you started it's, meditating. A lot, because a lot was going on. Right. And so I was like, how do I make a bunch of money? So I can do it. And, um, and so, and so that was uh, a reality for me. That was, that was part of what I was dealing with. Now, because of that, and I read the Arizona statute, the Arizona statute said that if I had people negotiating price on my behalf, okay, they had to be licensed real estate agents. Now, lots of wholesale companies- Because in you're it, the buyer. Because as the buyer, okay. if, I have, if I have a staff member negotiating on my behalf on price, that person has to be a licensed real estate agent. Okay. Okay. So if they're having any conversations about contract terms, price, anything, they need to be licensed. Now, many wholesale operations, in fact, almost every wholesale operation in Arizona is breaking the law when they don't have a license. Well, you license were expecting people. to scale because you didn't want to be I the one. I was expecting to scale, and I knew that I was going to have the biggest target on my back because of it. Mm -hmm. I was already the biggest wholesaler in the state at the time before we started Keegley. So being the largest wholesaler in the state before we started Keegley, what the hell was I gonna do if I was gonna become the biggest in the country? I was gonna have the, um, the most massive target on my back ever. So what do you do when you have a target on your back? You protect. wipe your ass. <laughs> protect yourself. You protect yourself, you do it right, <laughs> right? So I was just like, I ain't messing around. I'm not gonna play around. So we, started the company making sure that we broke no rules that we broke no laws that we had it all by the book i's dotted t's crossed dot dot d dot dot da because i even though it cost me a ton of money to do that i knew it was the right way to go because one day i'm going to sell this and if i didn't have all my agents licensed they were going to say remember remember <laughs> that time back in 2017 when you had 10 people working for you and none of them were licensed remember remember yeah we well, can't they can go back that far and we yes and deal with of course too. and they say we can't buy your company now because because of there it is there's the the, the, <laughs> no, the nar bugs have doubled they've it doubled his friends they brought his friends oh my god okay so anyhow that's the reason why um okay that's the reason why you still feel good about that decision based on the new regulations. Oh, today. hell yeah. Cause I don't got to worry about none of these, none of these. Why? Cause my entire staff is licensed cause I'm a boss and I'm going to tell you guys that if you're wholesaling, don't be one of those people that's like, I don't want to get a license. I don't like tests. Listen, I can pass a test. If you're in any of these markets, I'm going to start naming them off. Illinois, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arizona, Kentucky, Virginia, Indiana, the city of Philadelphia, the city of Atlanta, South Carolina, Connecticut, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Oregon, Iowa. You are going to need to be at some point a licensed real estate agent in order to do it. Not all of them. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty and specifics. Like, Let me see this. Let's get into specifics, okay? In <laughs> Illinois, let's get into it in, in, okay. in specifics, okay? In Illinois, if you do more than one wholesale transaction a year, you need to be licensed or use transactional funding. And if you want to use transactional funding, what's the website to go to? Flipcash. Flipcashtoday.com. We got your back. 
flipcashtoday.com we got your back That's, you're like the jingle man today. i'm the jingle man so <laughs> so so flip cash uh for transactional funding guys i will i will fund your ab contract um so that you actually are a real buyer so that you're a real buyer like pinocchio so yes please um and by the way guys if you feel like this is gold please drop it in the chat yeah and also Leave like this like this and share right? this with your friends yeah 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 what's happening oh my god it brought lots of friends where did they come from bobby Oh, I'm, we're, okay, Illinois, we're we're solid. What's next? Illinois. Nebraska? Okay, Nebraska. Okay, Nebraska requires a real estate license for publicly publicly marketing equitable interest. So in Nebraska, if you want to market your contract before you close, you need to be a licensed real estate agent. Okay, now that doesn't mean transactional funding is going to help you in this. Because it says market the contract. If you want to market the contract, you need to be licensed. So in Nebraska, you got to be licensed in order to market your wholesale deal. Because who's going to... So if who's, you're going seller direct, this doesn't affect you. But if you're on does. the... Well, how? Because you, if you are seller direct and you lock up an AB with a seller and you market that AB, oh, that's on the marketing other, equ mm. equitable interest. So you got to be licensed in order to do that. So in Nebraska, you need a real estate license. Oklahoma. Oklahoma has one of the most inflammatory um, uh, laws that I think exist. They call it the Predatory Real Estate Wholesaler <laughs> Prohibition Act. My God. Is there anybody out there doing um, wholesale yeah. transactions in Oklahoma? Let us know. How are you doing it? In Oklahoma, anyone who publicly markets for sale equitable interest in a contract is deemed to be acting as a real estate licensee. So the Wholesaler Act requires you to have a real estate license in order to market equitable in interest. In Oklahoma, as long as a wholesaler does not publicly market the property before closing on it, then they are okay. But who's going to do that? Because wholesale, that's not what wholesaling is. How wholesaling you, is, you, do that? you can't. Wholesaling is buying and selling equitable interest. And the only way to sell equitable interest is to market it. Even if you're bird dogging for somebody, that means you had to talk to them. Yep. You had to market it. Even just me saying, hey, Bobby, you like, hey, Bobby. You want this you like, deal? You like <laughs> this, you like this chapstick? That's marketing. That's marketing. That's it. Okay. So that's Oklahoma. Arizona, our favorite state, in 2022 said that a wholesaler must disclose in writing that they're a wholesaler. I love you, Arizona. You guys are so good. Arizona is just like, we like business, but we just want people to know that business is business. Well, and disclosure so, is okay. Disclosure, disclosure is perfect. is good. Disclosure is amazing. And that pivot, though, was scary at first. I mean, I remember a lot of masterminds around that topic. I mean, I didn't scam me. No, but you figured it out. Figured it out. You haven't changed your disclosure since. Since then. Since then. And you guys want to know what that disclosure statement is? Listen up, folks. Buyer is an LLC in the business of buying and selling real estate for a profit. Buyer may elect to fix and flip, buy to hold, and or wholesale equitable interest at buyer's sole discretion. Full stop. That's it. And that is the nugget. In Arizona, Gold. in Arizona, that is the most, that is the most amazing statement ever. It works all the time. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's sexy. It's safe. And it's loved by all. All right. Well, and it also tells the consumer exactly what you're doing. You're trying 100%. to, you are an investor. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Kentucky. Have you ever been to the Derby? Not in real life. Me either. I've gone Someday. to I've Someday. been to um the track. I've been to the track here and the was, track in Del Mar. It was fun. Beautiful. But I want to go to the Derby one of these one of these Mays. <laughs> what would you wear? Hmm. A fabulous hat, fabulous shoes, and something really cute in between. Okay. In Kentucky, it limits advertising to real estate agents. So if you want to be a wholesaler, 
in Kentucky and market your equitable interest, you got to be a licensed agent. In Virginia, if you want to wholesale, you have to be a licensed agent. It does not allow you to market equitable interest, including assignable contracts, without a real estate license. That's Virginia. Okay. Indiana. In Indiana, you have to disclose on your contract the following. That you're, you are a quote-unquote unlicensed real estate solicitor. Those are the words they want you to call yourself. Solicitor. Unlicensed real estate solicitor. How is investor and solicitor intertwined? I don't understand. That doesn't make sense to me. It is so janky. So janky. Now, they also require you to identify your buyer prior to, uh, to within two days. Oh, wow. Of, okay. Of, of going into contract. So it's going to make title easier. But in Indiana, <laughs> in Indiana, um, I would suggest using, because there's no prohibition against marketing. Okay. So what I would do is I would double close. I would use transactional funding in Indiana. So go to flipcashtoday.com in Indiana. All right. If you're in the city of Philadelphia. Hey, guys, by the way, drop in the chat where you're from. We want to know. In Indiana, You require what's called a residential property wholesaler license. I have asked everybody. What is that? Um, well, ooh, we have a website that you can go to and you can register. Okay. In the city of Atlanta, uh, they have passed a law prohibiting the commercial harassment of investors, of, of investors to purchase a house. So if you call a homeowner too many times or email a homeowner too Define many times. Define harassment. Well, that's what they haven't done, and that's why nobody's been um, – that's why nobody's been sued or arrested or, or fined or anything because they, they don't even know what harassment means yet at this point. So in Atlanta, it's still kind of up in the air, so I, I wouldn't really worry about it in Atlanta. But if I was you in Atlanta, I would use flipcashtoday.com. All right. Now, in South Carolina, wholesaling is banned. Banned. Banned in the USA. Wow. It was – Band in the U.S. <laughs> Did I it has, miss a music concert before not I been, got here today? <laughs> yeah, it's banned. Banned. So here's what South Carolina wrote in their law. If you want to wholesale, you need to be a real estate agent. And then it said, if you're a real estate agent, you can't wholesale. <laughs> That's the most, like, incredible. So they went through all the effort to get yeah. their license. Yeah. If you want to wholesale, you oh, need a wow. real estate license. And if you have a real estate license, you can't wholesale. That's South Carolina. So this, to me, just makes me think, do you think that we're going to get something on the federal government level that's no, going to come no. it's back all, it's and It's all say, state. It's already state. So it only can never be state. It can't be federal. Why not? It doesn't work like that. They wouldn't do it because they've already done it statewide. So it's always going to be state. It's, just, it's like abortions. Sorry. Change the subject. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry, not guys. the same. <laughs> sorry, guys. I don't just it's like state though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. That was terrible. Okay, anyways. Um, Connecticut, they're talking about it. Wisconsin, they're talking about it. Arkansas, they're talking about it. <sighs> so which of these Oregon mar markets are you in? Oregon, you can do any drug, cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, marijuana. Um, oxycontin, oxytocin, all of them. However, if you want to wholesale, <laughs> you, yes, if you want to wholesale, you need to register as a wholesaler <laughs> or face 364 days in jail. You can shoot heroin in Oregon, but if you want to wholesale, you better register. interesting i'm we, we say that one more time you can shoot heroin fentanyl cocaine marijuana and any other drug you like ecstasy mdma many others <laughs> but if you'd like to wholesale properties you need to register as a wholesaler or face a year in jail oregon you guys figured it out yeah wow i wonder who you're gonna be in the cell with
for that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being, I'm, this is America. This is America, guys. I don't know what else to say. What do I say? Like, this is the, this is the malarkey of, of what we've got going on here. In well, the at least toe ceilings on the radar. <laughs> you know, people are paying attention some places. Wow. Okay. And in Iowa, the Iowa has a whole list of stuff, guys. If you, if you want to wholesale in Iowa, don't. Um, no. Okay. So. In Iowa means that you got to be licensed. You have to have a whole bunch of disclosures. You got to disclose who your buyer is before getting into the contract, which completely negates the idea of wholesaling. wholesaling yeah. You have to explain in writing the wholesale process to your seller. So here's what I do. <laughs> So what I do is I find properties and property owners who are in distress and I put them under contract. And then I take that contract when it has some potential and I sell that potential to another person for a profit. So you have to explain that process to your seller before even going into contract with them. Wow. That's heavy. Yeah. You have to, a wholesaler shall provide an executed agency agreement to all parties in a transaction prior to going into contract. My goodness. In Iowa, guys, just move. <laughs> um, well, some of these people are virtual wholesalers. I think there's other markets they could explore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is what it is. I mean, wow. amazing title talk. This yeah. <laughs> well, it's heavy. I mean, this is heavy on the facts, right? It is heavy on the facts. I think it's still pretty relatively easy to do all of these. Listen, guys, in it's hundred percent. Look, don't don't get don't get all squashed. It, no, get out of here. Um, don't get all um, uh, bent out of shape. You all can virtually wholesale. Okay, if you're in a market that sucks, move markets. Uh, sorry. Um, He's throwing papers at me now, guys. Yeah, no, change <laughs> markets. Right, do virtual wholesaling. That's why the internet was invented. That's why cell phones work. Um, but that's it. I think with, um, change comes opportunity and, uh, there is a lot of growth on the horizon. Absolutely. Unless you're in Iowa, <laughs> in which case just change, just change states, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of everything that we talked about today? I'd love to get uh, a couple opinions in here before we sign off here. What a great show. And then what questions do you guys have too about anything we've discussed? Because there's a lot here. There's a, you know, I felt like we had a ton of content last episode, but this one's pretty heavy. It was awesome. Uh, probably one of the funniest uh, title talks I think we've had. <laughs> well, more, more jingles than we've ever had. Hey, can we, can we end title talk with a member berries? Can you bring, can you pull up South Park member berries for us to just show everybody what that, it, that whole little <laughs> thing was about because i think i think because i did it so many times it's really important that people understand what the member berries uh let's put them in the car put them in the car yeah the member berry scene in the car right there guys enjoy why didn't you love you member, too member all right guys check it out Maybe. You guys hear this? Can you guys hear this? If you can hear it, tell, let us know. Can you hear it? I see. I member. If you can hear it, just say yes. Because we don't want to play it if you can't hear it. If you can't hear it, then it's fine. Hold on. He got it. Not really. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. One more time. We can't hear it, but they can hear it. Okay. <laughs> can you hear it now? Oh well. Anyways, guys, go watch that episode on on uh, on YouTube. It's hilarious. I uh, appreciate you all for tuning in to this incredible episode of Happy Title Anniversary. Talk. Happy Anniversary. Love you, dude. <laughs> Cheers. Love you too. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. To another year. Mm, yeah.